Will It Blend has kind of a, been a fun campaign. Have any of you, are any of you familiar with Will It Blend by show of hands? Um, interesting. Have any of you, how many of you knew about Blend Tech two years ago by show of hands? Okay, that's, wow. There's a, there's a clear demonstration of the power of social media right there. Um, here we are, a small company in, in an obscure city um, in, in the United States, in Utah. And it's, it's just a wonderful opportunity to be able to come out and to, and to share that kind of power with a worldwide audience. When we started this campaign, I wasn't really sure whether uh, this was going to have such global appeal. I knew that it was going to be successful within the realm I was looking at. I'm going to talk a little, about, a little bit about today. By the way, if you have questions along the way, I'm happy to interact with you. I'll make myself available to you to talk. And uh, we're just kind of going to have some fun here today. So I did bring my blender, by the way. And um, it's kind of a challenge to uh, check these on airplanes. Um, We've, there have been a lot of people that have blogged and said that maybe this should be considered a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's been kind of fun. I, I use that blender every day. It's something that I'm passionate about. It's something that I like and something that I enjoy, so it's very easy to talk about it and to sell. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about brand awareness um, using social media channels, viral marketing. We're going to talk about uh, the Will It Blend campaign, per se. Um, before we get way into it, there are a couple of critical points that I think are very worth noting. Number one, the way we communicate has changed, okay? If, if you'll recognize and look at your own self, how do you, achieve, how do you receive information today? If, if there's uh, something tragic that happens, usually you find out about it before the 10 o'clock news or before the morning paper. We're now connected in new and interesting ways. Number two, obviousness. And, it's, it's so crazy because people will come up and say, well, yeah, of course, putting marbles in a blender is so obvious. It's going to be fun. You know, the interesting thing is things, good ideas are only obvious after they've been done. Before they're done, they're not obvious. And so th there are a lot of opportunities out there. The best is yet to come. Um, use the right tools. Um, be very careful. Um, and whenever you're wearing a tool belt and you have a hammer in your hand, have you noticed the world looks like a nail? You want to beat on everything? Just because there are tools out there doesn't necessarily mean that you should use them, which brings me right into the, to my last point, strategy. Make sure that your strategy is solid. Know what you want to do, pick the right tools to do the job, and then execute against that. And I'm going to talk quite a bit about Will It Blend. We're going to give quite a few stories and examples and tell you a little bit about what we did. Um, but for those of you who haven't seen a Will It Blend video, I'm going to introduce you just a little bit. Now, the guy that you're going to see on the camera, his name is Tom Dixon. Tom Dixon is the owner of the company. He's the original engineer. He designed the first blender um, that, that, that we sell. And uh, he's very passionate about it. He's an engineer. And if he were here today, you would, he's exactly like you see him in these videos. But let me introduce uh, Will It Blend. So what we had, great products, okay? Weak branding. People can't buy your products if they don't know your products exist, bottom line. Because of that, we had very weak sales. And, and that, was this, that was where we were. Does it sound familiar? Sound familiar like maybe a company that you have? This is the perfect recipe. It's the perfect recipe. As we started to go through and build our brand and bring together a consistent message and a consistent customer promise, um, I happened to come across a pile of wood shavings uh, on a floor in, in what we call our demo room, a place where we demonstrate our equipment to customers. And uh, I learned, uh, upon inquiring a little bit more, that the owner of the company, Tom Dixon, um, when he would make adjustments to the blender, maybe he would change out a bearing or a blade or some kind of a, a, of a design change. But the way he would test it is he would take the machine, ramp it up to full speed, and he would take a two-by-two two board and he would try to destroy the blender. He would break it. He would do everything he could to beat the crap out of the blender. And uh, it, was, it was just fun to watch. Um, I saw these wood shavings. I came in and had, had no idea. I was trying to figure out what happens, what's going on. And they says, oh, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. It happens all the time. This was just Tom. He was just testing our blenders. And uh, in my mind, I'm thinking, no, this is, this is really cool. I'd really like to see that. 
And so we took something that was a normal occurrence, something that happened all the time, and it was the genesis of the idea. And I guess the, the question that you all need to ask yourselves is what are the awesome things that you see every day in your, in your everyday work that maybe you've become desensitized to? What's the sawdust on your floor? Let me talk you through some of the key components of Willow Glen. Okay? What makes it so awesome? In fact, I'll just kind of come and, and walk around a little bit. Um, number one, it's worth watching. Anytime you put something out there, it has to be relevant. It has to be something that is, is entertaining or in some ways worth watching. Now, I didn't say it had to be funny. We obviously took the humor element and aspect with Will at Glenn. I don't know that that's absolutely necessary to take humor. There are some very engaging videos that are emotional. They're serious. They're, they're conveying very serious messages. But in some way, they're worth watching. It's, it's, so, it's engaging enough that you'll sit there and watch it. Okay? And so when you put out your content, make sure that you deliver something that's worth watching to your, to your audience. Number two, for us, it has a business objective. You see uh, people put videos out there on YouTube all the time of people lighting their cat on fire, or doing you know, all kinds of insane types of things. There's no business objective, there's no purpose. It's entertainment for the sake of entertainment. Okay, when we're, when we're talking for a business or for a corporation, you want to make sure that the messaging and the things that you do are relevant and engaging enough, but also communicate a very core objective. Um, one of the videos that we did was a, uh, a <coughs> tape measure. Um, one of our huge selling features of the machine is how short it is. It's uh, a total of 15 inches tall which means that it will fit under the average household cupboard. And some of the other, some of our competitors just don't have that type of ability. So that's an advantage for us. So one of the videos we did, we measured it. Oh, it's 15 inches tall. Perfect, that'll fit. I don't need my tape measure anymore. Then we blended the tape measure. Okay, so it's still, it's still kind of fun and light. Sponsored by... Um, a lot of mistakes out there by other companies. I know that uh, Sony at one point in time put together a campaign that they had hired a group, a quote unquote unbiased third party to endorse their product, okay? Big mistake, huge mistake. What happened is these guys had some videos that started to get some traction. People started to watch it, started to engage in it. And all of a sudden the uh, online community, which by the way is a very savvy community, recognized that somebody went and did some homework and figured out that these guys were being paid by Sony. And so now you have people that can take the same public medium and flame you. Literally expose, expose you right down to your underwear. You just need to make sure that you get everything exactly the way you want it. Sponsor it. Make it right. Okay? And if you own up to it and you make awesome content, people will be absolutely happy with what you've done. They won't feel like they're being sold to. It's okay. You can sponsor it. Don't try and trick people. Keep it real. Okay? The blenders that we have are, is a real product. They do blend things. Now, I actually tried to bring some rakes. <laughs> have you ever tried to check a rake on an airplane? <laughs> I tried, and I actually got it as far as uh, Charles de Gaulle in uh, Paris. And then they, conf they confiscated my rakes. So, um, you know, I, <coughs> but I brought a second play. So we're going to try <laughs> and demonstrate that this is a real product, and the things that we're doing are real. We don't, we're not making this up. 